Yeah, hey, Joe, thanks much. This is rolling down in Studio B. I can't hear myself in my headphones, but I hope everyone else can. And uh, Aaron McKeown. Hey, Aaron, how's it going? Hey, Roland. Thanks for saying my name right. <laughs> oh, I bet I we've been right? over this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was Sounds just good. a Sounds just shot in the dark. It. Yeah, cool. You're here all alone with just your guitar. I know. Uh, I uh, made the drive out from Raleigh this morning. Stayed with a friend of mine last night and came out. It was a beautiful drive today. Yeah, nice out, huh? And uh, getting ready for the, the big show tonight. You're playing at the North Carolina Stage Company up in Asheville and uh, playing solo. And I guess it's the first show on this kind of unusual little tour you're doing. Yeah, well, it seems that somehow 10 years have passed since <laughs> the first record that I made, which was called Distillation, which... As a station, you guys were so supportive I of. Still love that record. Yeah. It's so it's amazing to me. Um, and and I I remember a couple months ago, um, looking at the calendar or or I don't know quite what it was. Maybe looking at my shelf of records and looking at Distillation, I realized that it had come out in October of two thousand. And I was like, wait a second, that's ten years ago. What if I do a project around this? So that was when the idea was born. And I'm going to my uh, 14, 15, 16 best cities around the country and I'm going to talk about the record, what's different 10 years on, play some of the songs mm-hmm. and um, and we're going to, uh, tonight tonight I'm doing it solo, the rest of the tour is with a band, but I actually think that's great because it's going to make the Asheville show unique among all of them. You, you know, a lot of people say that playing solo is harder in a way because like, you know, the mistakes are more obvious and this, you, you miss. So it, it seems odd that in a way that you put yourself solo to start the show. Is that- well, I think I think what it is, I, I've always enjoyed playing solo and, and I began pretty much as a solo right. artist. Like my sort of s- origins come from like the kid alone in her bedroom writing songs. So in some ways, my, my music has always in my mind been solo. And then as I've grown over the years and become a better musician and learned about more things, then I began to think more like a band or learn to play more instruments, began to think about more orchestration. But in the beginning, it's always just been me and my instrument, um, which serves these songs well because these are the first songs that I ever wrote. I guess you could talk about the record then and now. Is it still a, a distillation that works for you? What do you... Do you, do you... Uh, something that I've, I've found... Um, something that I've found, Well, I mean, I don't listen to my records very much. Mm-hmm. I, in fact, not at all. So that's been interesting as I'm, you know, preparing to play the record in sequence. There's quite a few songs on here that I don't play and that I haven't played for a long, long time. Um, that's always interesting to me and the artists that I love, you know, watching them over the years and like right. what things drop off the set list, what things stay. Um, is there any rhyme or reason to it or how much thought is it? I'm always curious about that, about the artists that I love. But for me, there's probably half half of every record disappears. Um, you know, within a year, sometimes within a couple months. You know, you sort of play all the songs when the record comes out, but then some things work live and some things don't. Um, So for me, going back to to pick up songs that I haven't played in years, uh, was that was interesting because I don't listen to this record. How has it aged? I I, I listen to it and I think like, whoa, I sound really young. That's what I I listen to it and I think. And then I, I sort of listen to the details and I can still remember like what the the backstory was in the studio like oh we arrived at that sound because this sound didn't work or we arrived at this part because we were laughing and somebody did something by accident that's pretty much the story of how distillation came to sound the way it came to sound is because it was full of accidents and mistakes and um i don't know i think in that way it's resulted in a record that's probably aged better than other things that were more planned and maybe more tied to some concrete forethought you know like when you look at photographs or, your, or something you wrote a long time ago and it, it, it's sort of weird to look back and see who you were you, you know and I would think with this too I mean you, you were young relatively young then yeah I was 22 22 yeah. when it came out 22 about to be 23 as I'm now 32 it, it was, about to be 33 <laughs> something I mean sometimes like you look back and go oh my god I cannot believe I wore right. that shirt or talk that way or yeah um i i would probably i would say to complete that sentence i would say oh my god i can't believe um i was that unhappy really oh, i mean wow. i I, I think when i look back at that time for me 10 years ago i i think of it as tied to so much of um uh it was a it was an interesting like point in my life because it was the end of sort of that young insecurity like where you're all the time thinking about what you're wearing or people are looking at you and you know 
that that sort of like constant self criticism, that res- insecurity, um, and then there's this sort of brashness that right. was starting to sort of come into the picture as I was starting to have a little bit of success and starting to figure out what I wanted to do. And both of those things are incredibly irritating to me now. <laughs> and I see I see both of those things in that record in myself in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. And um, ten years later, I feel. Well, I certainly like myself these days more than I would never want to be that age again. Um, And I feel more grounded. But I think that is what, you know, I would describe my 20s. Most people might describe their 20s that same way. I I think that's common. and insecurity. And then they'll probably describe their 30s. I'm at the beginning of my 30s, but I would describe it more. And I think other people might agree. Grounded, perspective, um, that kind of thing. Yeah, young artists are angry and older artists have humor. Don't you see that again and again? No, it's, it's true. Yeah. It's true. And and young artists, I think, are um, prolific in a certain way that older artists aren't. And I remember being 22 and being like, what? You know, thinking of my th- friends who were 30 who might not tour as much or might take longer between records. And I'm like, what? I'm never going to be like that. No way. It's going to always be this way. I'm always going to work this hard. I'm always going to write, 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 write all the time which was the what distillation was the result of. And then 10 years later, I'm like, I don't know. I kind of just want to hang out with some friends <laughs> and, you know, I want to, like, think about my family and and work on my spirituality. And it's sort of you have a wider frame. So as you as you revisit the songs, are you deliberately changing them? You're, you're a different Aaron McKeown now, or are you trying to go back to the to the 22-year-old? Some, it's, it's a mixture. Some like The ones that have stayed in the set list um, for years, which are songs like, um, off the top of my head, Queen of Quiet, Blackbirds, um, this song, The Little Cowboy, has stuck around. Um, La Petite Mort has, has been a set closer from the first time I ever played it, 10 years ago till now. That's the OSL song for those who don't remember the French name. And um, so those songs have have moved in a lot of ways. And so that, now when I'm going back to prepare them for this show, I'm having to undo all the things that I've done to them over the years, all the extra sections, all the different changes I've made, different ways I sing it. And I want to do that. I want to kind of bring them back to their first versions. Um, but then there are the songs that um, that I don't play, as I was saying, things that fell off the list. And I go back and um, and I get a better idea of, then I really feel the difference of like, wow, I wouldn't do that now. Mm. I'm going to do it because I want to be faithful to recreating this record. Um, tonight I'm going to play it in this way because I want it to sound like the record. But those are not choices that I would make today. Well, how many shows are you doing? What's... Uh, 14, 15, I'm still trying to, I have made a wish list Mm -hmm. of places that have meant, uh, something to me over the years where I've got audiences that have been consistent and, um, big and, uh, and so I'm trying to get to every place on the wish list and that's hard because there's a lot of places in between to do it. And, um, and, you know, like I said, for the most part, I'm trying to, uh, bring a big production to it. Um, but I'm hoping I haven't been like 15 cities yeah. hoping to, to do that and add a few more if so, I can so it's solo tonight up in Asheville at the North Carolina Stage Company and then how, how big is the band is it so? well um, economy wise <laughs> uh, I'm doing it with a trio but I play a number of instruments right. and um, the rest of the tour uh, is is um, going to feature Dave Chalfant who is the man who produced and engineered mm-hmm. Distillation. And so that's kind of a coup to get him because he, um, he's he got he's got a family, he's teaching, he's also running his studio, so he's pretty tied. To he's his. got a real life. Huh? Yeah, I was about to say, he's got a real life. And um, so to be able to get him to come out for, for some of these shows is going to be really special. But don't have no fear, they will be documented in ways that all can enjoy them later hey, what's the uh, I know you have this really tight really unusual relationship with your audience um, down to funding records and things like that mm. but what's been the feedback how are the, the, the f- well we're just starting um, but so far people have been great they've you know there's all these people are saying please please come to my city please come to my city and, and like and like I said it, I would like to, and I'm going to do my best to get to my sort of wish list of places. But no, people are saying, okay, this is the first time I saw you. This is who I came to the show with. This song, oh my gosh, I'm thinking back to myself 10 years ago. Um, That was part of the uh, genesis, too, for the project for me, which is that, you know, I've made seven records since Distillation, and, and everyone has a different connection and I think people are especially fond of the record kind of where they they came into right. the sequence you know and I again artists that I love I think of the same thing like I love if if I if their fourth record is the record that I heard first I love that record um for me a lot of folks came in at distillation and uh feel 
a special connection to that record um, that uh, I don't get as much feedback about other records in the same way. More than any of my other records, people come up to me and say, my partner and I met at one of your shows or at our wedding, we played Love in Two Parts or, you know, people seem to have a lot of memories connected to the record. And as over the years, as, as I've noticed that, of course, my ego is like, what do you mean? You don't love <laughs> Hundreds of Lions the best? Like, that's the newest. But um, it's also really amazing that this record has found its way into people's lives and stayed. Yeah. And, and all your records are so different, too. It's, I mean, it's one of the things I've liked about you. But you know, whenever we get a new CD from Aaron McKim, we're like, okay, what's this one going to be? <laughs> <All right. laughs> It'll be interesting, but what in the heck is it going to be anyhow? So. Yeah, no, it's true. It's yeah. true. Um, and I want to mention congratulations on uh, your latest CD. I know it's, it's been out a while, but uh, we certainly enjoyed that, two hundreds of lines. And, uh, oh, thanks very much. Um, as a songwriter, sometimes you have the very practical problem of um, – Literally everybody I know um, has this problem at some point. You don't have enough fast songs in mm. your set. Because I think that's the other thing is you get older, you take more time with things and your songs slow down in a lot of ways. Mm. And um, you have to very consciously, I have to very consciously say like, okay, in terms of like what makes a good album, what makes a good show, the range of tempos right. ought to be there. Um, so every once in a while I'll bring Love and Two Parts back because it's fast. Um, but... Uh, but it feels really, uh, that's the song that that I always, by the time I get to the end of it, like I'm really right back in the relationship that uh, inspired it. Yeah. So, so are you a, a Walt Whitman fan? I am a Walt Whitman fan. Um, mm. My favorite thing about Walt Whitman is that, that sort of um, electric optimism yeah. that's in so much of his, his poems. I mean, he was an incredibly complex person and had a whole range of emotions and was able to sit with all of them. But what he put down on paper has this literal electricity to it that um, I really appreciate. And this sort of resolute, like looking forward. But so much literature is, is dark. I mean, it's hard to be positive and not be just kind of cheesy, you know, to, no, to look true. into the void and still. And it's hard to be positive and be creative. I yeah. mean, I, I think again, thinking about what makes a good song and, and the type of songs that you write over the years and how that changes. Um, it's certainly easier to write about heartbreak. It's certainly easier to write about loss. Has, has that grief. been true in your career? It's, like been the, true. it's certainly yeah. been true in my career. Um, and it's much, much harder to write the song about like that, about the really simple positive thoughts. Like yeah. it's going to be okay. I love you. Like we're cool, you know, or the day is sunny and it, life is perfect. You they, know? they always say that about Bob Dylan, you know, whenever he was happy, he's going to make a bad record. <laughs> you know, and, and what they say about Bob Dylan seems to be true for the rest of us, <laughs> fortunately or unfortunately. <laughs> so, so far be it for me to wish you unhappiness. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, it, it is true. Again, you know, you say like, oh, well, what, what record, you know, what's going to be the, the latest Aaron McKeown record, what's going to be happening? And you could probably trace the arc of my of my happiness through the the <laughs> types of records that i've made it's incredibly personal isn't it i mean what you put it out is there, and I, I think also thinking about distillation um you know all, all the songs in distillation are about um real live people who were in my life at that time um over the years since that got exhausting that got too personal so i would write from a different distance but at that time, I didn't really know any better, mm. really. I didn't really know what would happen when you wrote a song about um, someone you loved and then you had to talk about it or a bunch of people heard it and had their own feelings. I didn't know what that would feel like as an artist or how invasive sometimes that feels. Of course, it's invasive of my own doing. But <laughs> but still, and I think the lesson that I learned, um, for better or for worse, after distillation was to put a little distance around um what i was writing about yeah so again distillation is the record that aaron released uh, 10 years ago uh, your first recording and it's she's revisiting it on a 15 or so city tour or something like that it starts tonight in Asheville at the north carolina stage company solo tonight and then with the band the rest of the way there uh, aaron is, uh, it always sounds great thank you so much yeah. um really it is a pleasure to have been getting to come to such great stations like this for 10 years good lord yeah hey, so 10 years from now you need to come again that's right I'll all be right here. cool it's wcw again thanks to aaron mckeown and uh, we get into something now from john schofield <laughs> 